What's up guys? Today we are standing outside of 901 Strada Vecchia Road and we are about to get an exclusive look at this property unlike anybody has seen before. Just weeks before it is torn down. So some of you guys might be familiar with the story here, but in case you're not, I'll give you the highlights really quick. So this home was previously owned by the famous real estate developer, Mohammed Hadid. He bought this lot about 10 years ago, and then he spent the next eight years building it out into what it is today. Well, about six or seven years into him building this 30,000 square foot house, the neighbors down the canyon became a little bit frustrated with him, alleging that he was building the house way bigger than he was supposed to be, and that he might have even been cutting some corners with the construction. Los Angeles County ultimately ended up doing an investigation on the estate, and they did deem the property to be a danger to the public, and they ordered it to be demolished. Well, Mr. Hadid responded to this by saying that he didn't have the money to demolish the house. One thing led to another, and it ultimately sold at auction just a few weeks ago. This property sold to a company, Sahara Construction, and that's who we're here with today, who's going to give us exclusive access to this home and tell us all about what their plans are with the place after they tear it down. So let's go meet Sahara and check out the house. Before we do, I'm gonna warn you guys, this is not your typical luxury home tour. This place is a total construction zone, but I think that makes the story even more compelling and you guys are going to have a ton of fun with this one. My name is Nassim, I work with Sahara Construction. I'm the project manager for 901. Uh, we acquired this property about a month ago, but we've been in the works with the court for about three, four months. Awesome. Well, I'm so glad to be here with you today, man. This is really exciting. Before we walk down there and check out the house, let's just give everyone the lay of the land from this perspective. So what are we seeing here on this main level? What's above it and below it? Just kind of spell it all out for us from here. Sounds good. So this is actually uh, like a really long driveway. When it was built, it was lined with olive trees. It was very pretty. There was like different things. The, over there where the fountain is, there used to be a statue. All the pieces that are kind of laying against the house were on the third floor. So like that concrete, those were like all windows. The entire house on the outside was all marble. But what does this floor consist of now, what, of what's left of the house? So this floor, since it was the main entrance, is mostly common areas. The third floor was, to my understanding, was all bedrooms. The, this first floor has the kitchen, dining room, office, uh, common areas, and like a guest bathroom. On the bottom floor, probably my favorite part of the entire house, uh, we have the drive-in garage, movie theater, uh, bar, and Mohammed, when he builds all of his houses, uh, he puts a Turkish bath uh, in all the houses. So this actually still has the Turkish bath in it. Sweet. Well, I'm excited to see that, so let's get a little closer and go check out the house. How in the world would you get down to that level with your car to the garage? Was this going to be graded in a different way at some point, I guess? Honestly, to this day, I still have no idea. <laughs> but to my understanding, you drive down this section, you can go to the front entrance, and there was a path that was built. I honestly still haven't even seen under these tarps yet, but there's a path built to the garage. As of right now, we're in the cleanup stage. So last week we did most of the cleanup. So taking out the aluminum, the drywall, all the trash and leaves, cause there's no roof. So it gets dirty very quickly. So, um, especially so when it started raining, there was a lot of flooding inside uh, and outside. So just as we're standing around all this debris, so this is actually pretty cool to see what's going on here. Cause you guys bit, just bought this house a couple weeks ago. You're already, going nuts with a cleanup. So I think what this is showing us is that you're basically tearing everything out of the house first, putting it in piles of wood, drywall, steel, concrete, and then what, filling the dumpsters just one at a time exactly. based on the material? Yep. These panels are pretty interesting because it looks like they were basically just removed from what you said was the third level and just dropped down here. Yes. But what's unusual to me anyway, I'm just cur kind of curious what's going on here is like, it seems like these were would have been tiles just kind of affixed to the outside of the building, but why did they come down in these massive 
slabs of concrete like this. So the way it was built is the beams, they cut them, they saw cut them, and then just removed it with a crane. So the way they mm. removed the top floor is underneath this tarp, there's a graded like kind of slope down. They put a excavator, lifted the uh, arm up, and they cut everything and just tied it all down and then oh lifted one piece one by one. Kind of like a surgery. Yep. So here I am thinking they're gonna be up there just ripping down the tile and then ripping down the stucco, but no, they just cut it open like yeah, a surgeon yeah. and just lifted one piece down. I mean, the only way really to do this property is like surgically, is kind of have a crane or something larger that lifts every piece one by one, especially since the neighbors are down below and you know, God forbid something rolls down, it's something we want to avoid in every situation. Well, that was a question I was definitely wanting to ask you today is, you know, like a big part of the controversy surrounding this property is the neighbors down the hill, them worrying about this house falling down on them. You know, there's all these reports. How do you guys demo a house like this safely to make sure that not even the little bit, bit of debris falls down on those neighbors just that are literally just right down the hill. So honestly, in the most surgical way possible, as you can see, if you look down, the uh, the cantilever cantilevering deck was already removed. Yeah. The pool, uh, there was like a garden on the right. That was already removed. So there's kind of distance in between, but you still have to be safe. So we're gonna have netting and uh, plywood lined. So if anything falls, the netting will catch it first. And then behind the netting, there'll be plywood, so like little pebbles, things like that won't go farther. Yep, perfect, that makes sense. I knew there had to be a method to this madness. I, just, <laughs> I wasn't sure about how it worked. You know, we don't have, do a whole lot of hillside work out in Arizona. There's a few hills and canyons that you can build in, but it's pretty flat out there. The yeah, oh yeah. No, up here in Bel Air, everything is super steep. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this is just what you guys are, are used to. So we're walking in, did you say this is the kitchen or would that be over no, there? No, this corner? would be the like dining area. Okay. It has the connecting fireplace, and on this side would be the kitchen. Okay. Yeah, you know, one thing I noticed driving up here compared to a lot of the viewers, you know, know that I visited the one across the canyon a couple of months ago. Okay. The drive up here was significantly shorter. Like, you gain elevation really fast. My ears actually popped on the way up here. Oh, wow. And so it's like, you, you gain elevation really quick and here you are with these incredible views, but like you said, you're only a few minutes away from the main road, which exactly. is nice. Yeah, a lot of things that, in my opinion, I don't quite enjoy about Bel Air living high up in hills is the drive to get to it. You might, you can see your house from the main street, but to get to your house, it's like a 15 minute drive going in and out of different winding turns. Yeah. This is the easiest road. It's straight up Bel Air Road and then left on Stradivecchia. Yeah. Yep. So we're in the kitchen now. Is this as far along as Mr. Hadid brought this project or has there been a ton of demo work that's already happened here in There's the kitchen? There's been a ton of demo work already. To my understanding, it was furnished. Oh wow. There was a lot of furniture in it. Uh, there were chandeliers, the statues outside, all the trees were done. To my understanding, all of that has already been removed. When we got the property, there was no furniture inside. Okay, so the, the timeline that we all know is that it went to auction and it, it seemed as though he didn't, he wasn't in a position to demo the house, which is why it went to auction. But from what I'm hearing, he actually did start some of the demo before you guys bought yeah, the Yeah, so the third floor was removed before, I'm not sure if it was before it went into receivership, or if Muhammad didn't. Okay. Um, and the deck, the Ken Leaving deck, the pool, that was also removed before we acquired it. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, yeah, this is a pretty good size for a kitchen and I like how it ties into the rest of the house with that pass-through fireplace. That's a really nice element. And man, I mean, I don't know how comfortable I should be just walking out here so close to the glass. You should but... be good, just don't try to run through the glass. Okay, I won't try to run through it. These panels of glass alone are a feat in themselves, you know, I mean, they're super thick. I don't know if that'll pick up on camera, but just, I mean, this is, I feel like these walls of glass are definitely what sell houses nowadays, especially out here when you've got views like this, right? I mean, how important is this to all of your clients when you're building a residential house to do just massive walls of glass? In my opinion, when you have a view, you might as well showcase your view, especially higher up. I mean, it, I don't know if it's a clear day today. You can kind of see in the distance on the right side, the ocean. Yep. And then when it's really clear, you can see uh, Century City and farther down. 
See, this... on your behind, on this side, is the secondary staircase. Oh, I, I don't see. don't know if you want to go back through here, but here's the secondary staircase. So this will lead you to the nowhere. The third floor, now. which now nowhere, and then down below. So this was interesting too to me, and it's kind of hard to pick up on what the plan was here, but I imagine like if that was your entry that we walked through a few minutes ago, this would be just kind of like the a- The main entrance, main lobby, you have your grand view here. Yeah, this was never to be built out. This is just more of like a loft style exactly. here with a railing. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's awesome. And you would be looking down onto what was the pool at one point in time exactly. down there. Except if you put any pots or any, decor any, any decorations out there on that ledge, I don't know how you'd ever get to them. <laughs> That's a little scary. <laughs> so this is another staircase that, would, that takes this you This is to the main staircase that leads to the third floor and down below. Okay. Wow. It's built to last, it looks like. I know, right? Out of all that steel. So this is an office? This is another common area. Okay. Originally the house, the way Muhammad had it was about 40,000 square feet. As it sits now, it's around 20,000 square feet. Okay. And you guys are going through the demo process now. Do you have any idea what the plans are with that lot once you're done with demo? Honestly, no idea. Okay. Um, there's a lot of land nearby and there's a lot of beautiful homes nearby. Building definitely won't be 40,000 square feet, yeah. but something that we think is proportionate for the land and something that the neighbors and the court definitely agree with. Sure, that makes sense. And another home now, at this point, does Sahara do specs or is it, will, will so it be more So Sahara does more government work and uh, multifamily apartment buildings. Sahara has been around for 54 years. Okay. And in California, 37. Wow. Uh, Paul's done work in, uh, he did the Burj Khalifa, he did the Palm Islands in Dubai, he's done New York, Boston. Recently, we've kind of gotten more into the development space, especially in LA and the market. Yeah. And it's just more creative than an apartment building. Yeah, clearly, you guys are the right fit for this job because to me, as a developer myself, but granted on a much smaller scale, this is very intimidating. Yeah. You know, to take something like this on, I mean, the demo part of the process, granted you hire the right crew and they're gonna know how to piece this place apart just like you guys are doing, but it's hats off to you guys for being willing to take this on and having the guts to take it on. I'm kind of curious, at what point did this, the light bulb go off for you and Paul and the team to say like, all right, we're going after this house, like this is a good fit for us. So the, the bidding process, we found out I think 12 hours before the bidding closed. Wow. So our due diligence was our research on the property, everything beforehand. So I watched every single video you posted. Uh, Paul and I sat down and watched every single video to watch all the history, uh, every news article that popped up. Uh, and then we were decided it was a great fit for us and wow. we went into the bidding process. Just 12 hours before <laughs> the auction. Okay, you should have seen yeah. us sweating. Yeah, this is a powder room. If you walk through it, it's all marble, all like super tall glass. Yeah, cool. Now, Nassim, will any of this material be saved or is this all trash going in the dumpster? I wish I could save the marble. It just, the, the marble over time stained. Mm. So you yep. can't do much with the marble. The glass, maybe, the aluminum, they're all like recyclable. Uh, so it'll go along those lines. So when you were going to bid and decided 12 hours before the auction that you wanted to go after this house, was there competition? Were there other people like there was? So we, with you? there was us, and we were the runner-up bidder. Uh, another gentleman, uh, I don't know exactly who they are or what they do, if they're developers or just investors or wanted the land for themselves, but they were the first bidders, and the receiver met with both of us to kind of come up with a plan, uh, price points on how we're gonna tear down the building, things along those lines. And we ended up becoming the first bidder for the property. So that's interesting. So the bidding process wasn't like your typical auction that happens on the courthouse steps. Like exactly. They yeah. really did their due Because diligence. of the demolition, it was kind of a more touchy uh, auction. And speaking of demolition, so I understood originally that 
I, I don't know if it was LA County or the receiver was saying that the buyer of the property demo would be included. So whoever bought the property would have demo included. But for you guys, did you structure the deal differently where you said you'll just do exactly demo since we're a construction company, we can we constructed our our bid differently. So we are responsible for the demolition of the build or of the structure. And like we were talking about earlier, the way to tear down this building is the most surgical process ever. And I don't know if you can say or if you even know, but what does it cost to demolish a building like this? Oh, a lot. <laughs> At least a, a couple amount. million, right? Yeah, it's, it's, so the biggest problem about Bel Air, which a lot of developers might not understand, or I'm sure developers understand, but the most consumers don't, is going up the roads. Since they're not normal big streets, you can't really have a full load going into it or leaving with debris or materials. So everything you do is kind of times 10. Oh my gosh, I, yeah, I cannot imagine. And the neighbors probably have to, you know, they, they just have to deal with the burden of that for what, months? Does it take months to demolish this house? Yeah, so this house we kind of have scheduled for three months. Okay. The noise, we're figuring out ways to reduce as much noise as possible because you're kind of in a canyon, so it echoes. Yeah. So I found a material, or Sahara has a material that goes on all the lining. So when we do cutting or breaking, anything that creates large noise to do echoing, it blocks out the noise to have less echo so that the neighbors below don't get annoyed and the neighbors above don't get annoyed. That's super cool. And I love that you guys are doing that. It's very thoughtful because as you know, Nassim, I mean, I, I definitely have felt the wrath of this a bit. Sometimes investors and developers get a bad name because they're looked at as people who just come through and tear up neighborhoods or rip down old historic homes or all they're in it for is the money. But yeah, the truth is there's a lot of developers out there who are really thoughtful, you know, and have the neighbors in mind. And that's exactly what you guys are doing. It's just especially important here. Yeah. Because in Sahara's case, especially for this property, the biggest thing for us is of course the court order and making sure that the neighbors are aware of every step that we're going along with and kind of working with them so that they're more comfortable on how it's being torn down, the noise, things like that so that everybody's happy with the situation that's going on. And do you guys have any relationship with the neighbors down the canyon who initially were yeah, in so the Yes, so before headlines? we'll start the physical teardown of the building, we have a meeting already set up with all the neighbors so they can kind of understand exactly what we're doing. So there's no surprises for them. That's great. And Going back to the bidding part of the process, but relating to the neighbors, to me, this is something that I would have been intimidated by. Do you have any fear or did you guys have any fear that going into this, you might tear this house down, but then the neighbors just say, no, we don't want anything going there, or they're really apprehensive about the... Not really. It's, it's kind of just a relationship that you create I yeah. mean, when you do business with anybody. If you're rude to someone from the beginning, that's what you're going to get back. And if yeah. you're kind and you work with the person so you both come to an agreement on what you want to do there should be no problem that's a perfect way to put it i mean because there is some it's a mutually beneficial relationship for sure you exactly. guys want to do something that's respectful to their boundaries and exactly ultimately they should want you guys to do something that does uh, build value to the community exactly i agree perfect way to put it but yeah this area is the office like you have your desk here here used to be the glass window so you can view out same with here, there was another like glass so you could see the structure that was in the driveway. And what was that? You said that was a fountain, right? I don't know if it was exactly a fountain, but there was an art piece in the middle made out of aluminum or okay. steel. It was beautiful. Yeah, well, Hadid, he is most known for his commercial work as well, just like you guys, right? Yes. So he does hotels primarily from exactly. what I understand. So maybe he brought a lot of that influence in is what I would think with some of those details. I agree. So do you know what, what's going on with these walls? Is this like a Venetian plaster or what is this? And this baseboard is unlike anything I've ever seen. Honestly, I haven't even looked into that yet. If you call it a baseboard, I mean, yeah, not that I expect you got you to know that. It's not like you built this place, but I, it's just still interesting. Even the staircase here is beautiful. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look all that sturdy from up here, but when you see how it was built from below, this thing's solid. Yeah, the wood on top kind of throws it off. <laughs> yeah. So the amount of marble that's used in this house is incredible. There used to be crates in the garage still with the 
marble for like the design work, all the designs on all the marble were incredible. Yeah, I mean, you look around this room, there is no drywall in this room. It's marble or some exposed concrete, which was probably going to be covered in marble. marble. So yeah, even this tall part up here, these were all light fixtures that were already installed. So okay. they were already done. They were removed and now you guys are just left with taking down whatever material that is and every piece of marble along with it. So Same with this side. So all this, the view looking out was all glass. So you have your pool and all these were all sliding glass doors. On a curve like this too. Oh, okay, I see. So, so they actually came to a point like this. Yes. Okay, yeah. This is, I really like the sweep of this, like the shape of this room. And I can imagine the pool being extended, extended out. out. Yeah, because this view is just next level. I mean, you are looking, it's got, I mean, this is nearly a 180 degree view just from this vantage point. And it's completely unobstructed. You're not looking out at any power lines. It's just canyon, some city in the distance and ocean on a clear day. Like that's That's, that's why you sweet. people buy in Bel Air so they can have the view that they pay for and I mean every house in the hills and especially LA and Bel Air when you have an unobstructed view it's incredible. So down the hall is the garage and you have what I think is the like I guess bedroom down here just because you also had that deck out. Yeah. So that was also a bedroom on this side. I'm not quite sure but if we walk in yeah, let's here check it out. I would just be careful stepping on okay. this wood. Yep. You can kind of envision all the designs that used to be on this wall. Oh yeah. What's left of this one, you can kind of see some of that detail and it's kind of like a, I don't know, like a Venetian kind of a look or something. That's exactly. I mean, all the detail in the marble is so beautiful. We'll go to another room that you'll see and the detail, especially in this house is incredible. Yeah. And the scale of the rooms all feels right as well. I mean, it's interesting that you guys have the opportunity to walk this property before demolishing it and then building your own in its place because you can sort of get a sense for like what scales are appropriate exactly you know, and I, that's awesome that you have that because a lot of times if you guys are developing a residential lot you're just walking a pad of dirt you know yeah, and so yeah. it's like and it's vision straight from the ground up yep so this is kind of nice to be like okay this i could picture a room being here and this is what you would look out at and with a doorway of this size Another thing to remember yeah. is like, we, when we walk through all these rooms, especially how this is open, there was another, the deck extends out. Yeah. So it might feel big now, it felt 10 times larger with that deck. Yep. But yeah, this is the Turkish bath area. You oh. can see all the detail in the walls. I mean, it's incredible. Wow. This now, is my favorite part of the house. I'm not gonna lie, I might get some heat for this, but I've never heard of a Turkish bath before. Oh, okay. I mean, I didn't know anything about Turkish baths until I started looking through Muhammad's work and okay. seeing Turkish baths in homes. So what is it? Is I mean, clearly I can see the style or what's left of it anyways in this room, but otherwise, like what makes a Turkish bath a Turkish bath, do you know? I can't answer that question. No. I don't know <laughs> what's so specific about a Turkish bath that makes it a Turkish bath, but to my understanding, so like, the one has like a spa room. Right. This is that version, yeah. but with culture in it. So this flooring to me is weird. When I see some of this like worn out flooring, it seems like this must be something that's been here for a hundred years that's just been like, um, that needs to be like resurfaced or ripped out. But this is actually- These are all the old designs. This is part of the finished floor that exactly. was going to be yep. here, which probably went down five or more years ago. And it's just been worn away by the elements, I guess, which is why it kind of has this wobbly feel yeah. and destroyed look. Yeah, I mean, it's all open to the elements for right now. Yeah. And especially with all the rain that's been hitting LA. Yeah. And you guys, um, I mean, is this is not far off then, I guess, from what the house looked like whenever you guys bought it, The right? finished product, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, this, right as of right now, it's very similar to as, as how we bought it. Yeah. The only thing that kind of changes when we walk through the front, everything that's sitting outside was inside. Okay. So we cleaned yeah, everything just yeah. to kind of get All those tiles that we talked about exactly. a minute ago. Yeah. Yeah, see, I don't really know what any of this stuff is, but... It's beautiful. That's okay. It is beautiful. Yeah, and then back in here must be like some type of a sauna or a steam exactly. room or something. Yep. All right. I mean, yeah, you can just see like those types of details 
are challenging to pull off yeah, oh yeah. and expensive as well. So to do something like that in a spec, I mean, you can tell he definitely spent some money in here. A lot of this marble is stained. It's just stained, yeah. I mean, it, there might be a way to bring it back to life, but it's probably more trouble than it's worth, really. Exactly. This area is the wine cellar. Okay. This wine cellar was done. Uh, the parts to it are still here. But that goes wow. just crazy. Oh yeah, this is very echoey. I'm sure that'll pick up on camera. The glass, the moonlight, is all from that main entrance that we walked over earlier. So this is, we're right under the main entrance. Wow. This kind of area. Wow. That's cool. I didn't even notice that we were walking over glass actually yeah. when we came in here. I can't believe how echoey it is. Yeah, I mean, definitely the space down here is an entertainer's space. Yep. I think that's very important in homes nowadays is making something that feels like a home at the same time that you can entertain people. Well, and when you have the budget to be able to afford a home like this, which probably would have ended up costing, I think he at one point was saying he would sell it for $100 million. You, you want an entertainer's home because you probably have a lot of people to entertain, whether it's friends or business associates or family that you're flying in from all around the world. So it, you almost need a wing like this because you're going to be spending a lot of time with that family. Just 100%. Literally yeah, so this side is the, the bar. This is my favorite piece in the entire house. This piece right here? So you have the bar back here and this entire piece of marble rotates. <laughs> I mean, pull it. You've it's been working out, I, I can piece. tell. Oh my gosh. So wow. if you want to entertain while people are out on the pool, in that area, you can close off this section. Wow. And then- I've never seen anything like that. Serve people this one. Very cool. Very heavy. The shape is like that funky geometric shape too. I think it's, I, it, to me, it's the most, one of the most unique things is very unique. House. Yeah, between this and that bathroom so far, but I think I'm with you, that's probably my favorite feature too. Especially seeing the wine cellar and having all your wine and your alcohol in, in and the cellar is beautiful. This is over that entry again. So exactly. this is something you walk over as you're walking towards the front door. Exactly. So you're down here entertaining and, oh look, John just showed up. Hey, we're down here, man. That's a great way to tell. <laughs> no doorbell, just, oh yeah. look. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, man. so in here was supposed to be the movie theater, so these clothes, I don't know if, the, I don't think they'll close all the way right now. Yeah. But this is kind of the movie theater section. And you can kind of still see even with the wood, the way it was designed. Uh huh. And they still kind of have the lovely LED strips in between. So they were probably gonna put something over that that was some epoxy material or who exactly knows what that you could kind of see through. Yeah, you could tell it was up to something here. It's, not sure exactly what, but the movie theater didn't make it very far. It's just a big dirt room now, huh? Exactly. But yeah, this area was kind of like a backfill area. Mm -hmm. So to my understanding, Mohammed said, I'll just make it a movie theater. So that was kind of this section. So that wall, when this building is removed, has to stay just to hold the mountain. Yep. But the physical structure itself has to be removed. If that I can figure cool. out a way to take that piece of marble to my house, I'll figure out a way. You should. I'm just gonna get some rope and drag it home. Even this fireplace, I mean. Yeah. I'm six foot two. I'm gonna be standing in the fireplace. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just to give you guys an idea. Yeah, of the, the scale. Size of just the fireplace. That's the thing too, these houses, the scale of these rooms and these houses doesn't pick up on camera. Cool, so what's down this hall? So same thing, so all these are lined with marble. We have the elevator that was supposed to go here. Uh huh. To my understanding, I think this was the guest, like a guest bedroom, because you also had that balcony that goes out to the yep. pool. And access directly to the garage, so this is kind of like exactly. a, a mother-in-law suite. And there's a better example of some of that wood flooring that we saw in the bathroom over there. Just a little but, bit more saved from the elements. Yeah, but still, you can just tell. It's a shame because it was probably so hard to pull this off, and it's just been completely rotting and worn away. But, I mean, you know, it's just part of the story. Even the marble, all the designs on it, I mean, it's incredible. Gosh, yeah. I love that. I, I'm actually speechless. Like I was trying to think of a way to comment on just that marble detail and that fireplace. It's so cool. 
it just pops out at you, but I'm speechless. I don't have anything <laughs> to say about it other than that it's very cool. Like these are, uh, what do they call it? Bookmark or uh, book matching pieces too. So the veins on each slab kind of meet, uh, tie into each other. And see, there's more of that baseboard that I was talking about before, whatever that swooping baseboard is. If anyone knows what that is, let us know in the comments. I've never seen that before. It's the same thing. So this is the entrance to the garage. So we are standing in the garage here? Yes. Okay. I don't know how far back it was supposed to go, but this area is the garage. So, and look. then talking about earlier, all the designs. Uh-huh. You wanna just be careful because of all the yeah. trash. All these designs, I don't know if this has designs on it, but the pieces of marble are still all saved in here. See, like this one. Wow. Oh yeah. It looked like you were just handing over a piece of foam or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh man. Yep. Jeez. You know, I'll give one critique to this design here, and that is that first of all, for a $100 million house, which this was supposedly going to be, I don't think this is enough garage space. You know, I think there's enough room to fit maybe four cars in here. And the second thing is, we are very far away from the kitchen. You know, so to get from your garage with all your groceries, granted this person who buys this house might not be going grocery shopping on their own, but my, you know, my point is to get from your car to your bedroom or you the kitchen. You have to travel through the elevator. That's time. a hike. So when you go to a lot of homes in LA, when you go to a hillside home especially, it feels as though you're falling off the cliff. I don't know if when you came in, it doesn't feel mm -mm. like you're on a hillside. It feels yeah. like it's, you're on a flat land and yeah. that's the house. Yeah, because this, the, this lot is what? It's over an acre, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, and you can feel it, you're right. It does feel very flat and leveled out exactly. and spread out. You, and especially that whole like motor court area that's kind of hard to tell us yeah. right now because it's full of debris, but there's a lot of land out there and area to hang out and um, you know pull your car in and I agree. It just exaggerates the effect of how much land you really have because out back you're not gonna have as much. You've got room for a swimming pool and a deck. And that's yeah, it. and that's it. Yeah. But again, I don't know what's under all of these tarps because of all the rain. Yeah. It makes no sense right now to take it off and then have to deal with all the rain, let the it, mud, things yeah, like that. Yeah, let it be. Because you guys, I mean, you, you're doing a lot of work around here, so you might as well, like you said, just leave it. I mean, that was really easy for us to access this lower level now. Yeah, oh yeah. You gotta walk down that versus it being a big mud pile. Do you guys have a lot going on right now? A lot. Out here? Yeah. That, that seems to be the case with everybody I talk to is just everybody's so, so, so busy that it makes it a lot harder to be able to pull something like this off. You know, the fact that you guys were able to get crews in here within weeks of buying this oh, house yeah. is really impressive. I keep referring to my experience in Arizona. We don't do caissons out there, and there's probably a lot of parts of the world that don't, but I know that these are a big part of hillside development in California. Yes. So do you want to just talk a little bit about the process of driving caissons into the hillside and why it's done? and yeah, yeah, I mean, what it's definitely done like. for support. Uh, to do it, you drill a hole in the dirt, you put a sauna tube, and then the rebar, and it's filled with concrete, and that's a case on. And it's going how deep? It depends on the structure you're building. These, to my knowledge, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure they're about 20 feet underground. But per court order, we have to take the caissons one foot below grade. Okay. So the caissons have like, they're gonna be removed, but just one feet below ground. Okay, and then you'll replace them with new caissons in different locations. Exactly. Right. And just, I mean, again, to give the scale of these things, they're massive. These are like three feet around probably. Yeah, they're And 20 feet caissons. down, like this is crazy. And that just goes to show what it takes to hold a house like this up. And the biggest purpose for these, I would imagine, is for what? Landslides and earthquakes is yeah. basically what you're trying biggest to protect thing. against? Yep. I mean, you're holding I couldn't even tell you how heavy this house is, but you're oh, holding yeah. a lot of weight. Yeah. So there's caissons here, and then I'm not quite sure if you could see it through the tarp, but for that deck, like there's caissons there that have already been cut, and they go all the way mm -hmm. to that, the fence. Yeah. So the biggest thing through the court order is this hillside. Okay. When and you walk to it, I mean, you can really get a, a feel of how steep it really is oh geez yeah so was anything ever here before or is this just how it's always looked kind of crumbling away 
So I'm not quite sure if it was supposed to be, I've heard a few times that it was supposed to be a road, um, kind of like an access road or a secondary road to the home from that street. Wow. But that's a steep and a really tight road. Yep. I know it was also lined with, it was kind of like a garden area. So like if you see, there's still like one olive tree left. Mm -hmm. On the property before anything was removed, there was about 400 olive trees wow. on this property. So this was, we, we would guess probably in place before Mohammed even purchased this property then. This was from the previous residence, is that what No, so thinking? this was all land. Okay. So he bought two separate lots and made it the same lot. Okay. And then this was part of the design of this home. Okay. That just obviously never came to fruition because uh, the whole house never came to fruition. So that's a wrap for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I wanna give a huge shout out for Nassim taking time out of his day and the whole Sahara Construction team for allowing us access to this property today. I hope you guys had as much fun with this one as I did. Let us know down in the comments below if you have any questions that weren't answered today. I'll do my best to help answer them. Don't forget to hit the like button before you go as well because that really helps my channel out a lot. And one more reminder to hit subscribe too because I'm putting new videos out every week. So if you wanna see more videos just like this one in the future, you've gotta subscribe. That's all I've got for you this time. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.